Right, welcome back. And um, this is part two of the emotional eating and how to handle our emotions. So as I said in the part one, I'm going to focus a bit more on the positive feelings now. So in the previous video, if you haven't watched it, what I was talking about was just how to to feel the negative, how to feel the negative emotions on purpose and how to be present with them and describe them to yourself so that you are able to recreate them and so that you can feel them on purpose. And that way we will be in control of them. We can recreate them, we can decreate them, we can increase this feeling and we can decrease the feeling. So we're in control of those negative emotions and that way they're not so bad. If we know that we can decrease them when we're feeling, when it feels really bad, and we can allow that feeling to be there, we won't have to run to food to escape this a feeling. Uh, this feeling. So, I'm going to talk about this with positive feelings now. So essentially, you can do it the same way as you did with the negative emotions. But positive emotions are something that we can practice in a different way as well. But the best way of doing this is obviously to practice it over and over again. I just want to give you a little bit of a warning. So just be careful so that you're not learning how to create positive emotions so that you don't have to feel the negative ones. That's not going to work. You still need to be able to and willing to feel the, um, the negative emotions and allow them to be there. Because if you are not allowing them, if you're trying to push them away and hide them under a positive emotion, they're still going to be underneath and they're going to percolate and eventually they're going to get you to go to food again because they're going to pop up in your brain and you're going to feel them in a way that you don't want to feel them. You don't have control over them anymore. So we don't want to learn to feel positive emotions just to mask the bad ones, okay? I shouldn't even say bad because no emotion is bad. Emotions are just emotions. They are a feeling in our body, whatever that feeling is. And hopefully you have one or two maybe um, that you have already sussed out from the previous video and what they feel like in your body. That's all they are. Emotions are just feelings in our bodies. So they can't harm you. Sorry, they're not that bad. So pick any emotion that you would like to feel, a, a positive one, whether that is being happy or motivated or whatever. Happy is an easy one to work with, so I'm just going to use that one. So you can just say to yourself that I'm happy. And then you want to think about how you feel in your body. How does that feel when you're happy? And what actions do you usually take when you're happy? When you're happy, do you go to food? For some of you, that might be a yes. And what I want to say about that is usually that you're happy and you want to use food to be even more happy. So we're going to remove using food to be even more happy and now just be more happy anyway. Because you are in control and you can make this happen without the food. And it's actually going to be more real and sustainable than doing it with food. So think about how it feels in your body and what actions you would take when you're feeling this way. And this just allows you to be present with the, the happy feeling. And now something that could be useful is to imagine that you are an actor and pick an actor like someone who exaggerates a lot like um, Jim Carrey for example he's way over the top with everything and this is really uncomfortable for me because I'm an introvert and uh, I don't know how many times I've heard it that I'm reserved I'm not sure reserved is necessarily um, a fair description of me I am observant and um, and introverted it doesn't mean that I am reserved but anyway so this is how I uh, present myself and I wouldn't just run into a room and like, yeah, I'm so bloody happy because that doesn't feel natural to me. But if you are practicing this and be willing to feel a bit silly, it, it really, really helps. So 
I'm always thinking about my dogs. Whether I'm gone for a day, an hour, or even one minute, if I leave, I close the door, they're not welcome, and I disappear, and then I come back, they are over the top, crazy happy to see me. Every single time. And I n normally I don't try to encourage this because they're suffering from <laughs> uh, separation anxiety. So I just want to pretend there's, there's no big deal. But imagine that you are like a dog. So you come home and your partner's there or children or whatever. And rather than just like, hi, you are going a bit over the top. Like, hi, so good to see you. Yay. You know. And by doing that, they're going to think you're a little bit crazy. You're going to think you're a little bit crazy. But it's going to put a smile on your face. And it's going to put a smile on their face, most likely. <laughs> Unless they're teenagers, then they might just tell you that you're a moron or something. But that's okay. That's teenagers for you. So we can just exaggerate everything that we do that is a positive emotion. And this will generate more positive emotions, even if you feel silly. So this is something that you can just practice. You can't just do it once and expect it to work. Um, but the more you do it, the better you're probably going to feel about it. And you can choose how much you want to exaggerate it. But the more you exaggerate, the more um, of the positive feeling you are actually going to produce. So one thing to take into account is that your body doesn't have a clue about why you are feeling these emotions. And it doesn't, frankly, it doesn't care. So if you're happy because you won a million dollars on the lottery, or if you're happy because you imagine what it would feel like when you won a million dollars on the lottery, your body doesn't care. It, you're generating the same feeling in your body. So just pick a scenario that would make you feel happy and practice that. How would it feel to win a million dollars? It's like, whoa, okay, I would feel this and that, and I would do this and that, and then you just get fired up because you're imagining all these things. You're generating all these positive emotions in your body. And you can do this with anything. How do you feel when you are feeling motivated? What is it that creates that drive that motivates you to do something? And then just increase that with whatever means you have to do that. So you can create a really real experience in your body by doing this. So don't be scared that it might feel silly. You might not want to start with coming home and shouting over the rooftops that you're so happy to see your partner or whatever. But then you can imagine that you won a million dollars on the lottery and you can do it in the comfort of your bedroom on your own if you like. So just pick whatever feeling you want to feel, pick a scenario or something that will help you and then just let it all out, open the floodgates and just let go. So just to summarize a little bit, number one, you need to practice the emotions, that you, the negative emotions that you feel involuntarily. So whenever you have a a negative emotion and if it's a new one especially you just write down everything every feeling in your body and how it feels so that you can recreate this later and then you want to recreate it so that you can gain control of this emotion you know how to increase it, you know how to decrease it and that is the cl uh, the the one thing that you really want to do and then you want to practice feeling the positive emotions. Now, this is not in terms of stop overeating or the emotional eating. The positive feelings are not as necessary. But I felt like I wanted to include it because so often we only focus on the negative ones and we're allowing them and then we still feel a bit miserable. So we want polarity. We want the opposite. So if we want to allow the negative ones, we want to really allow the positive ones as well. It's so easy that we get stuck in, I need to manage the negative bits. So feel free to just practice the, uh, the positive ones as well. I think that will probably be really good for you. And when you realize that you can actually control all your feelings, you can choose what to feel at any time. And that's pretty amazing. And uh, yeah, so... I heard this, I wrote this down, I heard this um, once and I thought 
this is really interesting and it's probably very true as well but the only reason you that you do not have something in your life is because you are not willing to feel the feelings that are required to get it okay so the only reason that you don't have something in your life is because you are unwilling to feel the feelings that are required to get it what this means is that whenever you have a goal in your life whether that be quitting sugar or getting a different job or getting a degree or whatever your goal is maybe build a business it is going to be uncomfortable to get there and if you are not willing to feel those feelings you're never going to pursue this goal you're going to stay away from it so by taking control of your feelings and be willing to feel all these feelings the negative ones as well as the positive ones it's so much easier for us to reach any goal that we have in our life so it doesn't just apply to quitting sugar but i'm applying it to quitting sugar because that is you know the main thing that i have achieved that i'm really proud of and that i have been able to teach others and that is really really exciting to me if i know that i can teach others i can help other people getting out of this misery that i felt a lot of the time being stuck in this addiction and not being able to break free from sugar it's just so draining it robbed me of a lot of my life and a lot of experiences because of the side effects and the mind drama that was going on so just think about it whenever you are approaching a difficult task whatever that is in your life this is what needs to happen for you to reach your goal for you to get to the happy place on the other side you need to overcome this negative emotion or this part that will bring you negative emotions and then you just have success around the corner so i hope this has been helpful to you and is going to be useful in your life and um, yeah as usual if you are not on facebook in my facebook group you can find the link down in the description and also please subscribe to this channel it will help um help getting it will help the channel get better reach and we can have more people so it's all good it doesn't cost you anything just press the button and support a good course so thank you very much and see you in the next video